A 65-year-old man presents to the orthopedic clinic with the presence uh, with the complaints of back pain. Your task is to perform the spinal uh, examine the spine. We are going to see about the spinal examination. My name is Dr. Anand Srinivasan. Examination we you go for the as per the usual protocol. Introduce yourself, confirm the patient's identity, wash your hands, explain the procedure, make sure that the person doesn't have any pain, and uh, check if he has understood about the examination and expose the patient, preferably with his underwear. And if there is a female, if it's a female patient, make sure that uh, you have a female chaperone along. And we go as per the usual protocol, like look, feel, move, measure, and special tests. We observe the room for any walking aids or any wheelchair. We ask the person to stand up and have a walk and look for any abnormality in the walking. If any antalgic gait or if there is any abnormality of the spinal cord when he is able to, in the spinal column, when he is taking a walk. And observe the posture when he is standing. If there is any abnormal posture in which he is standing. Observe the chest for any uh, asymmetry uh, like pectus carinatum, excavatum and observe the pelvis both from the anterior as well as from the posterior side. Look for any tilting of the pelvis. The neck position, if it is normal or if it is slightly deviated to any particular position, you can ask the person to pick anything from the flow and when he does it, how does, uh, does he make any abnormal postures? And if the spinal column is straight, and he is able to pick up from the flow, and how he takes, how he comes towards the bed, you ask him to have a seat in the bed, and you can ask him look at how he comes and takes up the seat in his bed. Because if a person with the spinal column, if he has a spasm, he might find it difficult to take a seat. And make sure that you examine the. Uh, spinal uh, spinal column from all the sides both from the anterior the lateral the right lateral and the left lateral and from the anterior posture look for any abnormal posture we need to do this examination with the patient in standing and you stand behind the patient and observe the skin over the spinal uh, over the spin of the skin over the back you need to observe for any scars any swelling or any muscle spasms any tuft of hair, especially towards the end, so which might indicate if there is any congenital abnormalities like the, the spina bifida, uh, which has been hidden. Okay, and any abnormal pig pigmentations in the back, like cafeule, and look for any unusual skin creases, which might indicate if the spinal curvature is not normal. The height of the iliac crest. If it is equal on both the sides, both right and left, if in the person is able to stand, the height of the iliac crest should be, uh, approximately be the same. And look for any other abnormalities in the spinal column like kyphosis, scoliosis, and lordosis. Okay, kyphosis, you know that it's a it's an anteroposterior curvature of the spinal column. Scoliosis is a lateral curvature. Sometimes scoliosis can be postural, okay, so you can ask the person to bend down and usually if it is a postural one, it might, uh, it the scoliosis will disappear Thus, and look for any structural, but the structural scoliosis will not disappear even if the patient bends down. Lardosis, lardosis is co more common, it's commonly present you know, over the lumbar, lumbar region and uh, look for if it has been exaggerated exaggerated lumbar lardosis or if there is any lardosis in any other portion of the spinal uh, spinal spinal we come to the next part feel so we would be observing the temperature over the spinal cord if it is normal or if it is increased and look for the tenderness so where do we look for the tenderness we look at this we palpate the spinous processes for along the entire uh, spinal column like the cervical thoracic lumbar and the sacral regions as well so look for any tenderness in the spinous process palpate the interspinous ligaments so this is between the spinal okay so the interspinous ligament 
Look for any tenderness over this region and the facets as well. Look for any tenderness or spasm over the paravertebral muscles or the paraspinal muscles. Any swelling needs to be recorded. Now we come to the movement. So we will be able to make uh, assess the movement of the individual uh, vertebral column. So the cervical vertebral column, we will ask the person to do flexion. So he will be able to touch the chin towards the chest as far as possible. Extension, when he is able to extend the neck as far as possible. Lateral flexion, he bends the uh, head and touches the shoulder with the ears. So on both sides, so this is lateral flexion and rotation, he needs to turn his head both, both towards the right and the left okay, and touch the chin over the shoulder. So this is the cervical uh, examination. So usually we can ask the person to, uh, we, we should be mirroring the patient like we should need to demonstrate how to do, how to, uh, how to do the movement so that the person will be uh, able to repeat like whatever we do. The thoracic movements, so here, uh, usually we recover, we make a rotation, we ask the person, we'll hold the pelvis and ask the person to turn the, turn, turn over and look at his back. So, uh, this is the rotation, thoracic rotation. And also we would ask the person to make a chest expansion, take deep inspiration as much as possible and expiration. So in this we will be able to see if the thoracic uh, movements or the thoracic vertebrae are normal uh, or movement or if there is any restriction in the uh, movements. The lumbar movements can be uh, elicited by flexion. So here we would ask the person to bend over and touch the feet as much as possible. Okay, extend. So we will be asking the person to turn uh, to extend back as much as possible, lateral flexion to be the arms by the side, touch his uh, keep uh, with arms by the side, ask him to laterally bend and touch his uh, knees as much as possible. So, these are the movements which we need to do in uh, lumbar. The measurement tests so, we will be doing the Schober's test. So the Schober's test, we will be initially pointing, we will be marking the posterior superior iliac spine, that's the dimple of uh, venous, and we will mark a 10 centimeters above it and 5 centimeters below the uh, posterior superior, the horizontal line joining the posterior superior iliac spine. So this is 15 centimeters, and we will ask the person to bend over, and normally the length should be more than 20 centimeters. If it is less than 20 centimeters, it can indicate that there is a spasm or they may be having some conditions like ankylosing spondylitis. Now, this is there is another test which is called as modified as Schober's test. So here what they do is they usually make a mark over the posterior superior iliac spine and take 10 centimeters, mark a line 10 centimeter above it. We will ask the person to bend as much forward as possible and look for the distance between the two lengths. It should, the distance should be at least more than 3.5 centimeters. To record the thoracic vertebra, so we have, you know that we have done the chest expansion. So we will be measuring the chest expansion here. And usually after maximum inspiration, the, thoracic, the chest expansion should be more than Five centimeters. So this indicates that the thoracic movements, the thoracic vertebrae, uh, are, are normal. The next test to which we need to measure is the occipital wall distance. <coughs> so here we will ask the person to stand straight, arms by the side, look the chin forward, okay, and no, uh, and and we will measure the and the eyes are straight, and we will measure the distance between the wall and the occiput. So normally a person, if there is no exaggerated kyphosis or scoliosis, he will be able to touch the uh, occiput towards the wall. But in a person whose the kyphosis is uh, exaggerated, so or the, the spinal curvatures are abnormal, he will not be able to touch the occiput towards the wall. 
The next test, we will ask the person to lie down and we would be performing the straight leg test or the sciatic test. So here we would ask the person to lie down and we will ask the person to lift the hip joint, flex the hip joint as much as possible with the knee joint in the extended posture. So we would be asking, normally he will be able to do until 70 to 80 degrees. Then afterwards, uh, if there is any pain, we will ask them where is the pain. Note if there is any pain is this. During this test, the sciatic nerve, if it will be stretched, and if there is any injury or any intervertebral discompression, which usually between L3, L4, or between uh, L4 and L5, so we will be able to detect by this straight leg test. And uh, the Braga test is just another modification of this uh, straight leg test. We will ask the person to lift the leg up, and we will do. We will uh, do. Uh, we will hold the, uh, the examiner holds the patient's foot and do a gentle plantar flexion. So a gentle plantar flexion. So you can see that the stretch, of the sciatic nerve may be exaggerated, and the pain may be more uh, so even a mild case of uh, intervertebral disc prolapse can be detected by this Bragard test. The other test which some examiners perform is the slump test. So here what we do is we would ask the person to sit on a table and the slump position that is with his vertebral flex okay and we will ask the person to uh, extend his knee. So here you can see the hip is already flexed. We will ask the person to extend the knee and look for if there is any uh, pain during this movement. Okay, if the pain it's been radiating towards the back. Okay, the other point is we can then ask the person to flex his neck so that exacerbate the vertebral uh, curvature and uh, Sometimes, if there is, if the patient patient um, bends the knee, bends the knee, the pain may be exaggerated, which can be uh, felt. Okay, and this might indicate an intravertebral uh, prolapse, compressing the sciatic nerves. Okay, the pain may be exaggerated. We can also ask the person to do plantar flexion in during this time to look at if the pain has been exaggerated. So this is called as a slump. The femoral nerve stretch, stretch, stretch test. So here we make the patient to lie on the prone position. So you can ask the person to flex the knee. Normally if there is any sciatic pain, so this will be referred. So and the, an exacerbate, an exacer we can also ask the person to extend the hip joint. So here you can see the hip is in the neutral position. So here it can be exaggerated by uh, it can be triggered by the pain can be triggered by extending the hip joint and uh, you can see that the pain has been uh, more over the or the lumbosacral region indicating that it could be a uh, intervertebral disc prolapse leading on to sciatica the other test is a sacroiliac distraction test so in this test we ask the person to lie down in the supine posture and we would make a compression over the anterior superior iliac spines on either side. So during you can see the patient, the examiner takes a crisscross hand and gives a slight push over the anterior superior iliac spine and look for any movement, any sacroiliac uh, pain in these regions. So during this, the sacroiliac, if there is a sacroiliitis, so the pain will be exacerbated. So this is called a sacroiliac joint distraction test. The test is complete with the history of uh, with the examination of the other aspects, which includes the hip and knee, and a complete neurological examination including the nervous system, uh, the hip reflexes, the knee re knee joint reflexes, ankle reflexes, as well as the upper limb reflexes, all right, and then the cardiovascular examination. So with this, we come to the end of the spinal examination. Thank you.